Welcome to Reddit Aliens. Redditors who work at factories. What's the scariest thing you've seen a machine do to a person? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I was an electrician at a large lawnmower manufacturing plant and I was assigned at one time to the press room where large steel parts were stamped out. There were numerous people who lost bits or whole fingers, but one night I was called to a machine that had malfunctioned and severed a guy's arm from about midway between his elbow and shoulder, wedging him in the machine. That was pretty gnarly. It wasn't the blood that bothered me, it was the screaming saw a co-worker's foot get severed by a dock plate that was not secured properly. I got red wing safety boots from the company, although I felt bad for the guy when he came back to work in a wheelchair with his wife to say hi. My father and I worked in a box manufacturing company. There is a machine called the Shredder, which is an 8 foot wide rotating crusher style blade that pretty much just shreds effed up orders that we can't ship out. Another thing about the factory, it gets super hot in the building. Someone had been working by the shredder and passed out from the heat and had fallen into the shredder and ended up getting chewed up from the waist down, dead before anyone even noticed he was missing. Saw a 590F iron heat press crunch someone's arm at 7 bar, about 100 psi. The press had been acting up due to a wonky solenoid. While the operator was fixing a material rip due to the press, it grabbed him and it didn't let go. Another operator heard the screaming and took the ball peen hammer to the solenoid to release the pressure. Effed up day for all parties involved. I watched a guy tip over a fully extended genie boom. The fall arrest whipped him around like a slingshot and unfortunately he didn't make it to the hospital. On another job, bridge building crew, a foreman tossed a large scrap lag bolt off the deck of the bridge. It hit a man directly in the hard hat 40 feet below on the ground. He died instantly. Not a machine exactly, but related to the machine. A maintenance employee climbed into a large silo that was used to store beverage mix. These silos have nitrogen pumped in on top of the product to achieve positive pressure and maintain sterility. This silo was empty of product but still contained nitrogen. First employee climbed in and passed out due to the lack of oxygen. Another employee witnessed this and climbed in to save them. That employee passed out too. I believe a third person did the same thing before someone figured out what was going on and they got help. No one died, thankfully. At a plastic factory, a girl reached under a gate to try to pull a part that had got stuck in the mold out while the machine was shooting the next part. Her hand got shut in the mold when it closed and mangled her fingertips. Another time that I wasn't there, a guy moved a panel off an electrical source to clean around it and got electrocuted. There was a complete breakdown of everyone's safety training. He was knocked unconscious and nobody remembered what they were supposed to do. The supervisor couldn't remember how to dial 911 because he didn't know how to use the phone to get an outside line since the phones were all connected to each other and you had to dial 9 plus the number if you wanted to use it like a regular phone. The guy ended up being okay. He shot up after 30 seconds or so and yelled, I'm back! We had to retrain everyone on safety procedure after that. Small private metal shop. I'm a consultant working an R&D project. Machinist makes an error on a large metal working lathe that slices off two fingers completely, other two nearly off along the palm. A normally meek and less technically quick, I love the guy but he's not usually the quickest, had the wherewithal to sit the guy down, grab the fingers, super glue them back on, and super glue the lacerations, then wrap gauze and tape on the hand in about three minutes. Called the ambulance and it was there in five minutes. The guy was in a hospital room in less than 20 minutes. Doctors say that 100% the glue saved his fingers. Later, the hero guy pukes and passes out. The worker was in shock, but was awake the whole time. Not all heroes wear capes. Some carry superglue. I worked for an automotive manufacturer years ago. One of the maintenance guys had a bad knack for bypassing safety devices, popsicle sticks and limit switches, removing guard panels and leaving them off, you name it. He wormed his way into an automated welding system with a large turntable. It was powered on since he didn't believe in Lodo. Watched as he stood up and the turntable came across his torso and folded him down like he was made out of Play-Doh. His whole body squeezed down into a four inch gap, dead instantly. I worked at a milk processing factory where we had to use both caustic and acids to clean out the pipes in between production cycles. We had to manually take apart the pipes and reroute them to go to the cleaning lines. 
I go to this in a separate area, but a coworker starts to wash without making sure everything is hooked up properly. In the middle of changing the pipe routing, I get completely doused in dilute acid that was residual from the last time it was washed. I'm used to getting hit with water when hooking up the lines though, so I didn't think much about it, but the water just does not stop flowing, so I get confused. About 10 minutes later, I realize my skin is starting to burn. I got put out of work for, thankfully, only first degree burns on 85% of my body, with somehow no damage only to my face and genitals. It's scary to look back on because if that was the caustic I got hit with, I'd probably be dead or severely injured. That stuff is meant to break down organic materials, specifically. I worked in restoration for a bit, and one of my co-workers with long hair was using a stationary belt sander, watched it rip a good-sized chunk of his scalp right off. Never heard a man scream like that. Still haunts me. I was working in a plastic mold injection plant once. One of the grease monkeys went to check the oil on one of the big presses and valve blew and hosed him down on the spot. He was very, very lucky. He did it at the start of the shift and the oil wasn't up to temps. They didn't let him check the oil after that. Not me personally, but I've had a colleague who used to work at an ice cream factory and one of the quality checkers was trying to test the quality of the ice cream on a weekend in the big vats. Instead of switching the machine off, he leaned in and fell head first, and due to the viscosity, he couldn't swim and drown. Apparently he wasn't found until Monday. I really wanted to make some type of Rocky Road reference, but with respect to the family, I'll just say I'm sorry. Not sure if this counts, but I used to work at a cabinet shop, which was an extremely unsafe work environment. Nobody really wore safety glasses since our boss only supplied one pair for the entire shop was making a cut on a table saw, and this dude who I worked with tossed a piece of wood at the saw thinking it would scare me, shot up and hit me right in the eye, almost knocked me out. My iris tore off my cornea, causing iris prolapse. Yes, laugh it up. And now I have what looks like two pupils. Wow. This happened before I started working there, but it was a documented incident from a few years ago. We cut our own keyways for the shafts we use. In order to do so, we have a keyway cutter from 1972, which is a gnarly machine with six saws and absolutely no guards in place. The guy running the machine loaded it up while it was running, got his sleeve caught, and it pulled him in up to his shoulder. Similar to a comment down below, the maintenance staff said it wasn't the blood and the exposed bone, it was the screaming that got them. What's crazy is the guy still works there. He has really limited movement in his arm, and they basically give him whatever small job they can find and that he can handle. When my dad got out of high school, he didn't know what he wanted to do, so he started working with my grandfather at a factory where they cut leather. One day, the guy across from him lost all his fingers in a machine accident. There's blood everywhere. The guy is screaming, and then my dad is getting yelled at to quick go find the guy's fingers. While gathering up this guy's fingers, my dad says he had an epiphany. I should go to college. And he did. A friend told me about his colleague who operated a big food processor type machine for mixing and cutting wet paper. Then one day his shirt sleeve got stuck in the machine and long story short, it ripped his arm off. I was a maintenance engineer for several manufacturing companies. I once went to a cardboard box making factory to repair a stacking machine. The proximity sensor failed and the stacker broke through the railing and trapped my little finger cutting it in half. I had reported the proximity sensor over a handful of times to management, but nothing ever got done. Fair to say I sued their arse for over 15k and they managed to kind of save my finger after four or five reconstructive surgeries. Coworker let a part fall into the chip conveyor of the lathe. Out of instinct, she tried to grab it, had her arm tore off just below the shoulder. Different company, a forklift drove over an accountant's foot, had to be amputated. Stay safe, everyone, and wear your PPE. Worked at a door manufacturer. A lady was cutting a piece of wood on a circular saw. Her glove got caught on the moving blade and cut her hand in half. It was held together by only the skin of her palm. Gruesome and incredibly horrifying. It didn't happen to me, but at a company called Industrial Wire in LA, thick wires are wound onto big metal spools about six foot high. Guy got caught in it and became part of the spool. They hauled away the entire spool because he was at one with it. Coworkers would absolutely have PTSD for a long, long time. Oof. 
Not a factory, but years ago I worked at an airport. The ground crew was waiting at the gate for the last flight of the night to arrive. There's one guy up on the bridge ready to attach it when the plane arrives. The bridge is held up pretty much by a big pillar with wheels on it. One unlucky guy was sitting on the wheels when the bridge operator started moving the bridge. Rolled over him like pizza dough. By the time someone hit the emergency shutoff switch, he was pinned up to his thighs. The screams were horrifying. Not my story, but relayed from someone there. Imagine two giant rollers, easily a ton in weight each, designed to roll out thin aluminum foil. They are that close together. They can be separated a few millimeters for cleaning. Some idiot left a guard off. Now, imagine fingers, and then a hand going between the rollers when they're spinning, instantly stuck and pulled through. Now imagine skin being peeled back to the wrist, vomit-inducing with blood-curdling screams. They had to dismantle the machine to release his hand. That was not a quick process. In the early 90s, my buddy was a paramedic, and he responded to a call at this lumber plant. The bark removing machine for the logs got jammed up, so this guy shut it down and started working toward clearing the jam. The boss walked by, and wondering why it wasn't running, turned it on without checking anything. It hit a blade like a barber pole when the red part was a bleed. He got pulled in, literally, slowly turned him into hamburger. The guy who turned it on couldn't hear anything due to how incredibly loud the plant was. My buddy said they figured the guy was conscious until about the knees, then he most likely passed out. Oof. Steel coils are terrifying. I've been to places after the bands have broken or they've been dropped. Imagine a several ton slinky of death. Not only will it cut you in half with pressure, but also crush you in the meantime. I work on a lot of stamping presses, and for a while, Siemens made a press control. Sometimes at random the safeties and inputs would be met and one kept just cycling on its own. I locked it out eventually and advised a press control upgrade. They didn't do it. Wasn't there for this one, but it formed part of the high school training for everyone complete with pictures. Senior engineer with decades of experience decided to fix a machine without turning it off bypassing the safety so that he didn't shut down the whole production line, gets caught up in the mechanism and gets literally torn in half, with the torso taken up by the conveyor. Someone on the line felt something dripping from above him, assumed it was leaking hydraulic fluid, before looking up and seeing half a still alive and conscious engineer screaming but drowned out by the noise. He was extracted alive but died on the way to the hospital. Apparently the crush on the lower torso stopped him from bleeding out. Pictures were bad enough. The guy who found him was still working there. He needed four months of and about two years of counseling. Apart from that, deglovings, while not common, were not unknown and a few guys lost fingers, etc. Not a warehouse, but a hotel in the 80s. I was in security, so I responded to the call of a laundry worker who got sucked into the sheet dryer folder. It's not nicknamed the mangler for nothing. One moment of distraction and inattention, and the belts grabbed his shirt sleeve sucked him in and rolled him into a vaguely human-shaped ball of strawberry jam. Fire department had to partially dismantle the machine to free him. Oh yeah. Was also gas-fired, so the second and third degree burns. He was alive when we scraped him out, but died en route to the hospital. Oof. In posts all about factories, it's hard to imagine that a hotel one could possibly be the worst of the bunch. I was a construction superintendent. I've seen some shit on the job that would make a lot of folks here curl up into a ball and cry. The worst was a crane accident. It was a 500 ton mobile crane, brand effing shiny new. We were setting precast panels for a large office warehouse combined building. The oiler, aka crane operator in training, was polishing the shiny aluminum deck on the crane while the crane was operating. He thought he was in a safe spot because the panels were on the truck over there and were being sent over here so he was not in the current swing area of the crane, except that the precast guys needed a box of plates that were on the opposite side of the crane, so the crane swung that away. That effing guy was smashed between the crane's counterweights and the crane deck. He never made a sound, and the operator did not even know it had happened. His body was twisted and mangled nearly beyond recognition before one of the truck drivers saw the blood. There were little bits of brain and bone spread all over the place. It was effing horrible. I worked at a commercial bakery. We switched the normal bread dough to a different type for a Christmas bread. The Christmas dough was thicker and kept getting clogged in the machine's intake tube. Instead of turning the machine off and unclogging the dough, 
this coworker decided to unclog it with the machine on. Well, he got it unclogged, but the intake tube sucked his arm in up to his elbow and degloved his arm from the elbow down. Deglove means exactly what it sounds like, ripped his skin off. I worked in an office and saw the workers comp claim, and that's the exact word they used. 